Today, I'm going to be working on my C209 coupe. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to do to it, uh, but the most important thing that I wanted to kind of, you know, get out of the way is going to be my instrument cluster. Now, nothing is wrong with it. Everything else uh, on this cluster works great. The gas gauge, tachometer, and then obviously my uh, RPM gauge as well. Um, everything is great. But the main problem is going to be that main LCD display. As you can tell, my phone can focus on this, is it looks faded. Obviously, on the top part, you can barely see uh, half of the numbers. On the bottom left corner, you'll see the outside temperature. Bottom right, you'll see um, the clock. And on the, on the very right side here, you can kind of see it if I put a little bit of a, if I block the light some, you can see the drive, uh, reverse, pretty much what gear selector you're in. Um, what gear, uh, if you're doing it in a, in a manual mode on the Shiftronic, what pretty much uh, gear you're on, and it'll also display if you're on uh, weather uh, or sport mode. Um, and obviously you can't see nothing. And it's very important, to, to me I find this important because you depend on seeing that, which is gonna be your coolant temp. Um, there's no other spot for it here on the gauge itself besides that display screen So it's very very crucial because you won't know if your car's overheating until you get a warning But if you're on a hot day luckily today, it's, it's a little cloudy. It looks like it's gonna rain um, The actual screen itself is partially visible at night. It's perfect. It's not really a problem You can see it at night. You could see some pixelation. You can see it kind of fluctuating there like if it's about to give out um, the common thing with these cars if you plan to buy one they're great cars, by the way, very bulletproof all the way around um, this screen. And it's typically mainly because of heat. These LCD screens, you know, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll last a good while, but after a while, the heat does kind of bear on them pretty much. It, it pretty much just deteriorates the, the LCD panel um, to the point where it, you can't really, it, the pixelation just goes. Best best way to put it. <laughs> it's probably not a good way, but for the most part, it's, 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 it's done. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, how to remove it. Now, the main thing first is you need the special tools. Obviously, if you don't have the special tools, you can improvise. And you can use anywhere from something like this, pretty much an, uh, an, 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 a two millimeter Allen key. Um, you can make your own with a, a, a coat hanger. Uh, or you can buy the actual keys themselves and the, the, it typically looks exactly like this but at the end there's a hook. Now, uh, you could buy those, those are like, I think they're around 30 bucks for the set, comes with two. Uh, you can use one of these or make your own and it's pretty simple. On the right side of this slot here you're going to see a little slot divot. You go about, I'd like to say about five inches in, it, it'll stop there and you push it and you can hear it. Now, you do that side you're gonna be pushing it and pulling it at the same time. Now, if you're using what I'm using, you're gonna to have to pull because that's what those hooks for on, on the actual tool itself. The hooks help you pull. In this case, I already did it uh, ahead of time before I started this video. Uh, I did both sides. You push. Now, you don't have to really pull it from here. You can actually pull it from down here. Obviously, you tilt your steering wheel all the way down and you should be able to grab it with a slip. Now, I did both, as you can see, just comes right out as you can see it comes out pretty good so those special tools are a good thing to have if you're really um, uh, driven to use the correct tools you can or you can substitute this is not a bad substitute it will do just the same the same job if you have it already and you pull it all the way out now the one problem that I've always had is uh, wiggling it out of here it's 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 not really hard once you have the steering wheel all the way down you can easily just wiggle yourself out. It gives you enough room just to get back there and disable the clip, which pretty much is going to be just one solid piece. Now, the first thing you want to do, obviously, I have my car on. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. AC is going to be, you know, obviously off, but that's fine. Pull the key out 
and we're gonna wiggle it through now bear with me I am using my hand one hand in general when I should be using two I'll go ahead and do this I'm gonna pause this and we'll continue okay so I went ahead and took it out completely uh, it's way way easier for using both hands uh, probably I should get like a special mount when I'm doing these videos but hey you know I'm working with what I got for now um, it's just one pretty much one harness now this harness is pretty simple when it's locked in place it's in this position this locking clip and it's pretty simple if I can just focus on it it's this rivet here or this rivet this little uh, piece here you push it down and you should be able to pop it out now in the moment you do that this will automatically push the harness out for you so you don't really have to pry it or, or try to pull it yourself or struggle and it just completely comes off really really easy and how I have here is the cluster just one connect in the back and let's go here on the side I, I wanted to show you guys this so here is what holds this uh, instrument cluster in this uh, coop it's just this piece these little pieces down here just this piece keeps it from sliding out and as you can see when you put your uh, special tool or in this case my allen key it goes right in there straight in and lifts the tab up as so and then obviously it gives you enough just to pop it out and then do the other side as well if you only have one key or if you have the special tools it's pretty simple you just put in pull out <laughs> now this is pretty much the done deal and it's this this cluster is really easy to uh, to take apart it's not rocket science it's just held on by these clips obviously there's a tab so you don't tamper with but in this case this car is out of factory warranty so you know I'm gonna tamper with it all right so let me go ahead and get out and get back into my workstation and then we can continue all right so pretty much or typically you can buy a whole new cluster from the dealer um, that's a very good option very expensive option though probably looking at maybe like a thousand or more for the cluster I uh, haven't checked this was like about back in 2009 when I used to have one of these coupes before and when I knew, I knew very little about them so you know I was thinking hey I could just buy a new cluster and you know take care of that whole LCD problem but no uh, that cluster was like I think a thousand one hundred and eighty dollars if I remember correctly I remember that because that, that shocked me obviously I was younger and <laughs> definitely didn't have that money at that time um, to do that so you know luckily with you know uh, there's other uh, options with it with pretty much online you can um, buy a used one from a junkyard and pretty much you know hope that that cluster works on that on that unit or you can just buy a new LCD uh, a screen with uh, with the harness itself and that's what I did now it's, it's very inexpensive you can get it pretty much like around 70 um, if it's in the US or if it's out of state you're probably looking like around $50 with shipping which is hell that's not really that bad um, and there you are right there so as you can see it's uh, obviously there's the ribbon there's the screen itself and you can see how simple that is now getting to it can be a little uh, tedious you want to be very careful with this um, it is plastic there's a lot of other components that you can break so you have to really just take your time taking this thing apart um, but this is a very inexpensive, uh, inexpensive, uh, uh, inexpensive option you can do, uh, so you don't have to go buy a new cluster or um, <laughs> go junkyard shopping, is what I say. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, getting to this piece, this maybe might take some time, but all it is is these little t uh, tabs here one with a security tape which wow disintegrated but you can just use a, a, a pry tool you can use a, a screwdriver but I do recommend a nylon pry tool it, it won't scratch the plastic and it's it's the correct tool for this type of job now you don't really need any type of um, screwdriver or any other tools besides that which is great 
this this uh, cluster is a pretty standard one. Uh, it's, it's not complex like uh, like my E55. That one, there's a little bit more to it, just to get that those pieces out. Uh, and obviously, the newer the vehicle, the more <laughs> the more insane it's going to be. So that's pretty much it. We got three tabs up top, and I believe I have two tabs on bottom. So let me go ahead and pause this video and go ahead and continue on doing this because definitely I can't do it with the phone in my hand. We'll get back to you guys. All right, so I went ahead and got the tab separated. So what I'm going to go ahead and do real quick is probably put the camera down. It probably won't be the best possible angle here, but it just gives me an opportunity to just take this off. And as you can see, just like that, the top lid just completely slides off. All it is is a full casing. And the only thing you got to be careful of is your uh, reset dial here. You don't want to damage this. Now the next thing we got to get to is that ribbon. We got to disconnect that uh, ribbon tape here, or the ribbon harness, to be honest. Now, I believe, from what I remember correctly, there you go, it just actually sits in there. And here it is. Now, being very careful with this, though. So, in reality, this whole um, circuit board speedo display everything like that is actually not really screwed on or bolted on which is pretty neat so it's just held by pressure which is why it's very important you don't break any of these tabs on any of these pieces here because that's what actually holds this this assembly in place and keeps this from bounce, bouncing back and forth um, <clears throat> again any mercedes that you work on uh, and this is any car in general as well is you want to take your time you don't want to rush through anything. You don't want to uh, just second guess and break stuff because it's really it's unnecessary. And you know, <clears throat> you just it's 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 to me it's like a pride of ownership. You know, I take my time. I I I, I actually um, try to do things right and and actually try to keep everything how it is originally without damaging anything. I have some friends that work on their cars and man, they just if they if they can't get it. They'll guess it or break it, one or the other, and eventually it just costs more it's it to me it's just the integrity of the car it just falters for me um i don't know if that made any sense i'm still this is my first time doing a video so just bear with me now we're continuing <clears throat> so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay this flat it's going to be kind of hard with that uh, piece in the way be very gentle take your time there so i had to lay it flat because this is in the way so it's a lot easier to work on, especially with just one hand. So normally I wear gloves. Today I'm not wearing gloves. So you got to pull these pin tabs up. All right, so we got this one up. As you can see, this side is already coming undone. So now we need this side. There you go. That's two. And it should be pretty simple. A little tug. And even though I'm going to replace this piece, I don't want to damage it. There you go. Perfect. Simple as that. Now we got to flip it over. All right, it's very careful. Now this is pretty simple here. It's just a cover. Dirty cover. I'm gonna maybe clean that right now. Just the cover itself. Um, getting to it is gonna be the scary part because I really don't want to damage this cover. Oh, it's kind of hard to work on it with one hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause it <clears throat> so I can use both my hands, and then I'll show you how I took it off. 
awesome. So I went ahead and popped it off. I got one of my um, pry tools. At the very edge, I just stuck underneath and slowly lifted and it popped right off pretty easily too. And it just has pressure clips here, as you can tell. Let me just focus. So that actually came easily off. So that's one piece removed. There's these two tabs here. And it's what holds the screen in place. Now this screen is in these slots on the white corners here. And it has these tabs at the very bottom. Now the trick is to pop this screen out. Move this here. So I gotta pop these pin, these are uh, these taps down, because they have a little hook at the end. If you can get on the side, see how it holds the screen in place. I gotta slide that. I gotta push that tap down, slide this, the edge of the screen out, and I can slide it from that slot end that where it's connected to at the top. So it just slides right out. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and do so, but I'm not gonna do it with one hand. So I'll be right back. All right, so I did that, slides right out. So you gotta be very careful. As you can see, I cracked uh, the glass a little bit. <clears throat> so the way how it works is don't be afraid to pull this down. You pull it down enough, it'll pop. When you hear a pop, that means the glass kind of flex through and it came over the edge of the slip. And you do the same on the other side. Once you got both loose, you can just slide it out. And there's our old uh, our old panel. Oops. <laughs> well, we know if that if that gas gauge don't work, we know why, right? And that's done with. And let's see if we can see in the light. I don't think we can tell. Well, I can sure tell when it's on, but that's the old screen. Now we can get the old screen out and put everything back. So, <clears throat> this new one has a film over it. It's not scratched, it just has that plastic film over it. And these tabs, this side here. Let me focus, there you go. So yeah, we're gonna slide this right back in here. The main difference between the two, well, there's not much of a difference. This one's slightly designed, it's designed a little differently, or at least the ribbon, uh, the circuits are run differently. But this is the same one, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the film from off of it. And uh, let me, <laughs> again, one hand. And there you have it. <clears throat> See how clean that looks now? Now we're gonna go ahead and slide it in. Slides in just like that, up in the slot. Want to be very careful when putting this in. And there you go, it just pops in just like that and it hooks right back in place. Now we can flip this uh, cluster over. There you go. And we can go ahead and focus on putting the ribbon in. And remember, it's the plates facing out take your time hmm it seems a little shorter oh no be very careful so pretty much you're just gonna put the whole thing back and uh, center cover pretty much just pops right into place and then everything is just in reverse order and that's pretty much how you replace an LC uh, CD panel on this uh, C209 cluster or any W203 uh, vehicle that has this type of cluster. You know what, for a C203 owner, I am very happy to see this screen on a hot day. I've been in a lot of these type of vehicles um, where this screen is just <laughs> either completely gone or you can't even see anything. I barely even see the, the pixels or even any of the numbers for that matter. But look at that. Look how nice and bright and clear that is. Hey, you guys. What's up? This is Panzer. And I just wanted to recap on my uh, last uh, project that I did for my C203 Coupe, the LCD display for the, cus the cluster. 
Uh, I just wanted to uh, to let you guys know if you happen to do the the project itself, it's very easy to do. It's uh, you know it's it's not complicated at all. You need just a basic tool, which is a, a nylon uh, a panel popper in general. Um, but it, it's a very easy job to do. Uh, I recommend it, especially if you have a, a faded display. Uh, just like I said, with every other project that you do on any car, just take your time, uh, do a little bit of research, and if there happens to be any um, any uh, videos about it, hey, you know that's even better. It helps, which is the reason why I, I'm, I'm doing these videos now, just to help anyone out who's who's trying to uh, to you know either improve their car or or replace certain items that you know you you can't really replace. Um, by themselves um but anyway the recap um the lcd panel the ribbon harness itself if you happen to uh put everything together you replace the screen you're good you're happy and you happen to connect it and nothing turns on do not panic you did not mess it up it's mainly the the harness itself is probably not aligned and it's not lined by pin by pin so you're gonna have to pull the harness out or if you happen to put everything together take everything apart pull the harness out and align it again correctly. It has to be perfectly matched with the pins inside the connector. If not, you're gonna have a dead harness. It's it, a dead uh, instrument cluster. There's not gonna be no lights, no gauges, nothing. It's gonna be dead, like there's no power to it. So you wanna be able to just disconnect it and realign that pin for the harness, uh, the harness cable, or the harness uh, uh, tape and realign everything and plug everything in and it should work if, if it happens to work the first time hey you did a great job but if it hasn't you know don't 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 uh, don't think you destroyed your cluster because that's not the case it's just that 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 uh that ribbon cable has to be uh perfectly aligned when reattaching it and that's just to let you guys know so you guys don't think you destroyed something <laughs> and it discourages you to do any other project um but anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to recap, that main uh, factor with, the, with the, the LCD display. For my next video, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a uh, silencer delete on my C203 Coupe. It does come with the, uh, the compressor uh, supercharger, and the only difference is it comes with a silencer, and that muffles the sound of the whine. Now, it's a Mercedes. People, you know, but when they build the vehicle, they, uh, I'm pretty sure their customers didn't want to hear that high-pitched whine. I have an E55. I want that uh, high-pitched wine, which is why I'm doing this. And with every other project that I do, I make sure I do it right the first time. It is a 2002 C203, and I wanted to make sure I just had to take it apart once, put everything back, and I'm good. So that's why I bought a new uh, gasket for the supercharger to the, the pillow uh, uh, casing and to the piping between the, the top uh, portion of the, I guess what you would say, an oil catch kind of a setup that it has up top and to the supercharger new seals new breather hose new crankcase hose and that's pretty much because um, mine is, is is hard like plastic and this is obviously soft supple rubber and it's going to come with a new line as well and this is all direct from fcp euro you can get all these parts um really really good pricing and they're all uh, oem parts are their oem manufacturer produced parts so it's pretty much you know you're getting it either from the dealer through them at a cheaper rate then you would going directly to your your neighborhood Mercedes uh, dealership, and you know you can pretty much uh, get quality parts for your vehicle, and that goes for any European car, BMW, Audi, Mercedes. Uh, it's it's all there. Uh, I will put pretty much a link of uh, of everything in the description below, and um, pretty much uh, just wait for my next video. Like and subscribe if you like uh, what I'm doing, and we'll continue going with more videos as we come, and. When my A55 is ready, I'm going to be doing videos on that as well and a recap of everything I've done to the vehicle, or both vehicles in general. Uh, you guys take it easy. Pans are out.